Hello and welcome to another episode of Bike Channel Kenya. In this segment, which we are calling What Happened To, where we'll be looking at bike models and racers who just disappeared and we don't hear of them anymore. Now, before we go on, I want to apologize for the sound issues on the previous video. Apparently, I used a very high-end microphone and when I tested it out on my phone, which is a Nokia, it did fine. However, guys with other brands, even the latest ones, were having a hard time for some reason processing the sound. So, I have re-recorded the audio on an older microphone. Anyway, now that is out of the way, let's look at what happened to KTM's only superbike. And the story begins in 2003. And we have to go back to 2003 because this is when the first prototype was unveiled. And they specifically chose the Tokyo Motor Show because they apparently wanted to send a message to the big four Japanese manufacturers. Now, it wasn't until 2005, two years after the prototype was unveiled, that the management gave the green light for the project to start development. Fast forward to 2008, when it first went on sale, and this is also where the RC8 problems begin. Now, if you can remember, back in 2008, the global economy went into a recession, and that meant people didn't have money, so sales were greatly hurt. But that was the tip of the iceberg because in 2009, Yamaha introduced their cross-plane model R1, aka the Big Bang model. Worse, even for KTM, it was when the legendary BMW S1000 went on sale and became a blueprint for any new superbike because of its power and electronics package. So it wasn't off to a good start then. However, it was a good bike. The between had mid-range that the Japanese could only dream about and lean, which could make any rider feel the Komotojipi star, and looks, which looked like they came straight out of a sci-fi movie. The RC8 had two generations, the first being from 2008 to 2010, which they just called the RC8, and the second generation from 2011 to 2015, when it was discontinued, which they now call the RC8R. For the second generation, the displacement was increased from 1150 to 1200 cc's, and now it had twin spark plugs and the color scheme was now orange and white as opposed to the just pure orange on the previous generation. In 2011, the RC8 was entered in the IDM, which is the German Superbike Championship, and went on to win both the Riders and Manufacturers Championships. KTM also wanted to enter the WSBK, but the rules changed with the V-twins now being allowed to have a maximum of 1200 cc's. And because KTM had been developing their motor with the 1000cc's V-twin limit in mind, they decided to abort since there will be no match for the Panigali 1199, which was the bike which made the rules change anyway. Because the WSBK could not afford to lose a manufacturer as important as Ducati, who had been in the championship for so long. KTM instead entered in the Moto3 and eventually to MotoGP, where they are improving every season. Now, when it first went on sale back in 2008, Superbugs had a big market share and manufacturers were bringing updates to their models every two years. However, by the time the last RC8 was sold in 2015, small bikes was where the money was, especially in developing countries in Asia and in Africa. So it was the right decision to focus on the smaller bikes and it worked out great for them, especially if you look at the sales figures in India. Also, by this time, the other manufacturers had caught up with the S1K and now the likes of Kawasaki, Yamaha, Ducati and Aprilia were producing good bikes with a ton of electronics like traction control, lean angle sensors, wheelie control and so on. While the RC8 didn't have even something as basic as an ABS system. By the time they sold the last one, they had sold 5,000 units, which is a very low number for a big company like ATM. However, on the brighter side, the RC8 was used as a stepping stone for the 1290 Super Duke. And everyone knows that is a beast of a machine. Apparently, also before it was discontinued, they had been testing a new cylinder head, which was making 210 horsepower. Remember, that was back in 2015, so by now, they will be making almost 230. It is a shame that we didn't get to see that cylinder head in action. However, life must move on. So, there you go. Bad timing for the first sale with the economic recession of 2008, debut of the S1K and the Big Bang model R1 a year later, 
and not enough development during its life in terms of electronics. Of the 5,000 units ever sold, we have three here in Kenya, and this was the first time I ever saw one live, and it was the inspiration for this video. Have you ever seen one, and what was your reaction to it? Anyway, that is it for this video. If you liked it, hit the like button, and if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? See you on the next one.